So in this video, I'm going to talk about ray transfer matrices, also known as ABCD matrices in optics. And I'm going to talk about why we might want to use these, uh, how we go about understanding them, and uh, why they're interesting, and why they're preferable to any other way of doing things. Well, so if I've got a ray, let's say I've got some optical system, and it's got some optical axis, uh, and I've got a ray along that optical axis, so maybe it's pointing out from the optical axis. This ray uh, fundamentally contains uh, a, th a few pieces of information. First of all, where is it along the optical axis? So we, let's call that the um, let's call that the y coordinate. Uh, the second piece of information is its angle, and the third piece of information is its height above the optical axis. So here we've drawn it with zero height, but you can imagine a ray that's emanating from a point that's off the optical axis. Maybe it propagated from out here or something, or it actually uh, propagated from some point source uh, at this location. So it's got some height, uh, let's, let's call that x. And so a ray contains three pieces of information. And so essentially it's two spatial coordinates, x and y, and it's angle from the optical axis, theta. And so we're interested in how this ray changes as a function of y. So as the ray propagates through our system, uh, maybe we've got some lenses, uh, maybe we've got an aperture stop, maybe we've got some other fancy stuff going on. Um, but as this ray propagates through our system, how do the x and theta coordinates change? Uh, because the x and theta coordinates just tell us where the ray is, what its height is, and which direction it's pointing. And so if we have that at all points uh, along the optical axis, then we can trace out our rays. And so the most straightforward way to do this is, you might say, well, Jordan, can't we just use geometry? Like, this is geometric optics after all. Isn't it simplest to just use uh, geometry to figure these things out? And sometimes, yeah, it is. Uh, but when you get to more complex systems, um, like say you've got a three lens system, for example, or a two lens system and an aperture stops and an aperture stop, uh, it becomes incredibly difficult to use geometry. So you could very well trace rays uh, throughout the system using geometry, but it becomes increasingly difficult the the more system the more elements in your system you have, and so ray transfer matrices say, well, let's forget all that geometry. Let's just uh, let's just say that I've got some ray um, here. Let's take the ray at this position. Let's call this position y one, and I'm interested in what happens to this ray at some other position y two. And let me just erase this old, clearly nonsensical ray. So I'm interested in how the x and theta coordinates, so this is theta 1, this is theta 2, this is x2, this is x1. So I'm interested in how x1 uh, changes into x2 and how theta 1 changes into theta 2. And for this simple case where we're just propagating the ray through free space, so there's nothing in between, it would be fairly simple to figure out. And we'll, uh, we'll derive these relationships in future videos. But in general, we're just gonna say, uh, we're just gonna say that we're totally ignorant, that uh, we have no idea what the relationship is between these two, but that it's linear. So x2 is some linear combination, uh, let's call it some coefficient t11 uh, times x1, plus some other coefficient t12 times theta1. And similarly, theta2 is a linear combination of x1 and theta1. And we can write this equation as a matrix equation. And this is why these are called matrix uh, ray transfer matrices. Uh, we can write this as the following equation, x2, um, x2 theta2, uh, the vector, is just equal to the matrix t11, t12, t21, t22 uh, times x1 theta1. And it might not be obvious why this is interesting to do. In fact, this seems like it complicates things. Uh, this seems 
like uh, it's adding unnecessarily complexity. Uh, seems like it complicates things. Um, but in fact, these individual components of the matrices actually have physical meaning. So we'll find out in future videos that uh, each one, very simple relationships between these coefficients and zero, say, so as a uh, example in the future, T12 is equal to zero corresponds to where an image is formed. And T11 gives you the magnification. Uh, T21 will give you the effective focal length. So there's all sorts of physical meaning to these matrices. And if you get good at manipulating them, then it becomes incredibly easy to deal with optical sy systems of arbitrary complexity. The other beautiful thing about these matrices is that they're very easy to cascade. So we've got these two rays here, x1, x2. But what if we're interested in a third ray, say uh, maybe after it passes through this first lens? Maybe it looks something like this. Uh, so it's got some uh, angle theta 3 and some value x3. Well, we can write this as a relationship, as a matrix relationship, x3 theta 3 is just equal to some new transfer matrix, let's write that as t nu, times our old vector, uh, x2 theta 2. And if we substitute in what we had for x2 theta 2, we can see that x3 theta 3, our newest ray, is just equal to the newest transfer matrix times uh, our old transfer matrix, so I'll just call that t old, uh, t old times x1, theta 1. And this itself is just a matrix. So these matrices can, cas can be cascaded, uh, they can be transformed into new matrices, and so for any ray in the system, uh, we can represent it as just a matrix uh, times another ray in the system. And this is an incredibly powerful, uh, incredibly useful technique. And so our goal in the next vi few videos is how do we describe these transfer matrices? How do we describe them for, uh, say, passing through a lens? So passing through uh, a lens or an optical system in general, uh, propagation uh, in free space or in an arbitrary medium, uh, just general uh, refraction at an interface. So maybe we don't have a lens, uh, but we've got a slab of glass or something. So we want to find out what these transfer matrices are for arbitrary um, optical systems. And then once we figure them out, say we've got some object, we've got our optical axis, and we've got a lens, for example, um, we could disc and we want to know what the ray looks like here. So at some position, um, some position, let's call this S away from the lens. And let's say the object is a distance, well, let's say SO, <coughs> S object, and let's call this the image, uh, image distance. The, we can write the transfer matrix of this system because if we have a ray emanating from our object, and in general that ray might be at a certain height along the object, so it might have a certain x in coordinate, let's call it, and a certain theta in, then first we just need to propagate this ray. So we need to propagate it by a distance SO. Then we need to pass through the lens. And then we need to propagate it by a distance SI. And so we can write the total transfer matrix as propagation by SI times propagation through the lens times propagation by SO. And the reason for this seemingly backwards um, ordering of the matrices is that we're evolving this vector in time. So first we need to apply this matrix to the vector, then we apply this matrix, then we apply this matrix, and then we have our final vector. And you can do this for any number of optical elements, any number of distances. Um, it works for any, any optical system you could imagine. So I'm just going to make one last comment, and that's uh, how do we know, uh, how do we know that x and theta are actually linear functions, so x2 and theta2 are actually linear functions of x1 and theta1? Well, in general, we don't. Uh, we don't, right? This is, uh, these 
actual relationships look like geometric relationships. So we've probably got a sine theta one, we might got a tangent theta two, we might have an x1 squared, but if, uh, if we make the paraxial approximation, so also known as the small angle approximation, so theta one is very, very small. Uh, so theta one is much less than say pi over two, then these relationships do in fact reduce to linear relationships. And so uh, we, we can use ray transfer matrices only when we have small angles uh, to deal with.